Heavy in synapses, using synapses to represent knowledge and representing knowledge as relationships. This video builds on several previous videos which converted neuron firing rates to values and then learned to recognize different patterns of inputs. This video will extend these concepts to create knowledge. Knowledge is often represented in a graph structure which consists of nodes connected by edges. In this simple graph we can see that Spock was played by Leonard Nimoy who starred in Star Trek. Well, it's obvious that some sort of graph-like structure is implemented in the brain because you and I can answer the same types of questions that can be answered from this graph structure. On the other hand, there are a few significant differences. Neurons and synapses can't contain information. They just spike. In a computer, we can attach text to any node or edge to give it meaning. In the brain, you can't do that, so all the meaning must be inferred from the neural connections. Next, synapses are one-way, unidirectional, where edges are typically two-way. That is, they have inverses. The fact that Nimoy played Spock implies that Spock was played by Nimoy. While this might be intrinsic in the graph, it must be explicit in the brain. Finally, all your brain can detect is the relative spike timings of different neurons. How it converts these relative spike timings to knowledge is the topic of this video. Even this simple graph would be immensely complex when represented in neurons. So, in the previous video I introduced these very simple questions. Given that A is red and B is red, what color is C? Further, I asked, given that A is lighter than B, what is the relationship of A to C? Now I'm going to go through how to build a knowledge graph in neurons which can answer these very simple questions. We're only going to consider just two very basic relationships. A is red, so it has a hue or color, which is a more or less absolute relationship and A is more intense or brighter than B, this relationship is only meaningful in comparing objects of similar types. Likewise, B has the same hue as A and C, but it is not as bright as A or C. Here's how we might represent this information in a graph. We have the nodes A, B, and C, and another node representing the color red. Then we add edges, indicating that A, B, and C all have the same hue of red. And then we add more edges to store the facts that A is lighter than C and lighter than B, while C is lighter than B but not lighter than A. While we've just started with these two relationships, hue and brightness, there are numerous others which would be applicable to an object in your visual field. Objects can have shape. They might be bigger or smaller than each other. They might have some visual texture or shading or be nearer or further. They might be touching or have a differing orientation. There are also relationship types related to other senses like louder than or hurts more or smells like. Then there are even more complex relationships like causes or happens, which are essential to AGI. Performance is important to think about because it has profound implications on how the knowledge in your brain must be structured. In a moment I'm going to show you an image of A's and ask you how many of them are red. Did you see them? Did you see that there are two red A's? And did you also catch their relative positions? Consider how long it took for you to build these relationships in your brain, just a fraction of a second. There are several implications from this information. First, there is no time to grow new synapses. This means that all the synapses must already be in place. Your brain just adjusts the weights of the synapses. 
There is also not enough time to set any precise synapse weights. Recall from a previous video, the more precise you want the synapse weight to be, the longer it will take both to set and to sense. This also implies that all possible relationships must already be present. They must be connected with low-level synapses just waiting to be strengthened to become meaningful. Finally, we can easily conclude all of the relationships you can sense from your visual inputs must be processed in parallel. So let's start with a single relationship, which might be represented by two nodes and an edge. Let's start with representing the color of A. We might say that A has the color or hue of red, but in English we might simply say A is red. In order to take on a color, synapses must already exist to all possible known colors. So representing the information that A is red is simply a matter of strengthening the synapses between A and red and weakening the synapses between A and other colors. I discussed how this happens with heavy and synapses in the previous video. Of course, it's not that simple because not only when you see A is red, if I ask you to name some red objects, you can name A just as you could count the red A's a minute ago. For the most part, every relationship has an inverse. But because synapses are one directional, a relationship and its inverse are really just two separate relationships. So as we zoom in on this specific relationship, and through the remainder of the video, I'll show only the strengthened synapses, but keep in mind that there are thousands of other synapses with lower weights waiting to be used if needed. Of course, it's still not that simple. In order to differentiate which relationship is which, there must be additional neurons. One representing the relationship going forwards, one representing its inverse, and this was described in greater detail in the video on the Universal Knowledge Store. But wait, there's more. If you're given two nodes or objects, you want to be able to know what the relationships are between them. In a moment, I'll use this third relationship to ask what's the relationship between A and B and learn that A is lighter or bigger or something else. So every relationship is represented by three neurons, the relationship going forward, the inverse, and the query which will allow you to know what the relationship is between any two objects. All this complexity is embedded in a single knowledge graph edge. So if we also wanted to represent the information that B is red, we'd need to utilize another set of neurons and synapses to represent that color relationship. Now, if we were to add the lightness-darkness relationship to say that A is lighter than B, we'd not only use another set of three relationship neurons, but we'll have to represent these in our library of all possible relationships. You can see as we build this tangle of synapses, it's beginning to look a little more brain-like, especially when you consider that for every synapse I show, there are thousands with low weights just waiting to be used. I just wanted to touch on the idea that we might store information of how much lighter A is than B by using multiple synapse weight levels, because the more possible levels, the slower things run. It would be much faster to have eight different brighter than relationships representing different relative levels than to interpret multiple synapse weights. By adjusting synapse weights, any relationship can be applied to any neuron pair within a cluster of thousands of neurons. In the same way as selecting a color, the meaning of a relationship can be selected from a large number of available relationships by adjusting a few synapse weights. So here we're representing that A is bigger than B. And here we're representing that C is brighter than D. In essence, the brain has a pool of relationship structures, 
and these can be pressed into service to relate any neurons in a cluster with any relationship by adjusting the weights of a few synapses. To add a few more wrinkles to the process, consider that neuron firings are seldom exactly coincident. So short-term memory is going to be necessary everywhere. This means that wherever I've drawn a single neuron, two neurons will likely be needed. We should also consider that most relationships are transitive. So if A is bigger than B, and B is bigger than C, then A is bigger than C. Fortunately, this is not difficult in neurons as I described as the recursion function in the video about the universal knowledge store. We can draw a number of conclusions from the information I've presented in this video. First, a knowledge graph or some sort of equivalent structure is necessary in the brain because you can answer the same types of questions that can be addressed by the knowledge graph. Creating such a graph in neurons, however, is immensely more complicated than it is in a computer. This observation has huge implications for the amount of computer power needed for AGI because the computer is much more efficient at this type of operation. In neurons, you can't simply add edges and edge types whenever you need them because the process is too slow. In the computer, you can. I've just discussed two relationship examples, U and brightness, but the relationship structure is similar regardless of the number and types of relationships, and the process of creating a relationship between two objects involves strengthening a few Hebbian synapses. Finally, the ability to infer new relationships is a key to AGI and is a topic of ongoing research. All this functionality is currently being developed in the Brain Simulator 2 and you can download it free from brainsim.org and follow the development. The Brain Simulator project is continuing to gain momentum, so be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and join the Facebook group to stay up to date on the latest development and weekly updates. Also, share this video with your friends and colleagues and encourage them to join the community project so it can make even more progress towards discovering AGI. And as always, thanks for watching.